everyone. Welcome to this uh, live stream this morning. So I uh, was just checking my email this morning and I got a question from one of my parasite students who said that she has a goat that has um, a heavy dose or heavy load of barber pole worms that's causing a problem. And she's probably two or three weeks pregnant and she doesn't know what to do in terms of giving this dough a combination dewormer since, and these are her, this is what she said. Valbazin is the only white dewormer that kills barber pole worm, but it's not supposed to be used during pregnancy. So how am I supposed to give a combination dewormer to a pregnant goat? So this is wrong. Um, and unfortunately she got this from one of those Facebook groups that is supposed to be out there to help people to with their goat health problems. So all the dewormers kill barber pole worm. All the dewormers kill barber pole worm. Okay. All of them. Um, so that means that Valbazin is not the only dewormer to kill barber pole worm. Look at the label. The label on every single dewormer says that it kills roundworms and barber pole is a roundworm along with several other roundworms. Um, and I was very confused by this at first and then all, and then it finally clicked um, why this would be put in a Facebook group because the other thing I hear a lot is that safeguard just doesn't work. And unfortunately, the reason that people think safeguard does not work is because if you use the dosage on the label, it does not work. The dosage on the label is wrong. According to the American Consortium for Small Ruminant Parasite Control, you should actually use twice the dosage that is on the bottle of Safeguard. And yes, that I am talking about Safeguard for goats. If you compare Safeguard for goats with Safeguard for cattle, the dosage is the same. Um, what happened was um, when they got FDA approval for Safeguard is that for goats, they um, used the same dosage for, as they did for cattle. And they got the label approved and they can't change it unless they go back to the FDA and submit again. And getting FDA approval would cost them millions of dollars. And since goats are a minor species, they would never make that money back. That's why most dewormers are not labeled for goats at all. Um, and you need to go to the American Consortium for Small Ruminant Parasite Control to find out what the correct dosage is for the various dewormers because they're not labeled for goats. Um, they are, they're labeled for sheep and cattle because there are not a lot of goats in this country. And so it's just not profitable for companies to get a drug labeled for goats. And this is really unfortunate. So the reason that people think that Safeguard does not work is, so that's number one, is because they're underdosing. Um, and when you underdose, not only does it not kill those worms, but it also makes the worms resistant to the dewormer um, because every single worm that does not get killed by that dose is going to reproduce and give birth to, um, or they're going to lay eggs <laughs> that will hatch and turn into larvae, which turn into worms that are resistant to that dewormer that you just used. So you're basically, you're breeding resistant worms when you um, give a dosage that is not the correct dosage. Um, and this is so frustrating. Like every single week, I get multiple emails from people who are told by their vet to give the sheep dosage to their goats. And that is incorrect. Um, don't believe me. Fine. I am quoting the American Consortium for Small Ruminant Parasite Control, which researches this information. And you need to be giving twice the sheep dosage for every dewormer except levamisole, and levamisole is 1.5 times the sheep dosage because it's a lot stronger and it actually has a very small margin of safety. I have heard of people killing goats with levamisole when they used 4X. So don't think more is gonna be better. Um, and don't even think about using levamisole till nothing else works because it is the strongest dewormer out there. Um, and if you're doing everything right, then you should not get dewormer resistance. So this is a little bit like um, I did a live stream 
two or three weeks ago from after somebody sent me an email that said um, the vets have told him that in his area, dewormer X does not work. Well, that is just wrong. Like worms don't crawl from farm to farm. Um, so you can't say like you could have a farm across the street that has got resistance to every single dewormer out there. But they work on your farm because you haven't been doing all the wrong things. If you do all the wrong things, then yeah, you're going to have dewormer resistance and you're going to have it to all, you're eventually going to have it to all the dewormers, not just Safeguard. Since Safeguard is labeled for goats, that's usually the first one that people buy when they're new. They follow the label. It doesn't work. So then you get this myth on Facebook where everybody is saying Safeguard doesn't work. I use Safeguard, y'all. <laughs> um, I only have to deworm one or two goats a year. That's it. Most of the goats on my farm have never had a dewormer. Typically, the only goats that ever get a dewormer are first freshener yearlings, which I almost never breed them. And that's one reason. The other thing is first freshening yearlings don't usually produce a lot of milk. And I want my kids to be big, fat and healthy so that they don't wind up with coccidiosis and worms as kids. Um, and they don't. So this is like a really big picture thing. It's not about it's not about like, oh, take two aspirin and, and call me in the morning. Like, it's not just about using the right dewormer dosage, although it that is absolutely a huge part of it. Um, you shouldn't need to be using dewormers on a regular basis, though. So if you have a pregnant goat that needs a combination deworming, what do you do? Um, you give them twice the label dosage of Safeguard. Um and then you give them twice the label dosage of ivermectin. And then you give them, um, and then for the, it, usually I just use those two. If you want to use a third one, you can use more until tartrate, which is um, the feed additive. Some goats don't eat it. Um, so if you want to use that one, I get the one that you can add to feed um, so that you can mix it into their feed and they're more likely to eat it. There are some that are sold as a complete feed. And so um, in those cases, what you're giving them is a complete feed. So you're, you're not gonna mix it into their feed. And a lot of times they don't eat that. Um, but if you, anyway, for more information about this, you can go to thriftyhomesetter.com slash goat dash worms. Um, and that's where I have like the complete article on goat worms. And, and actually tonight um, we're doing our Q and A with parasite students on Zoom. So if you get into my parasite course um, today, we'll send you an invitation to the meeting tonight at 7 p.m. Central um, on Zoom. So um, Jasmine says, I cannot wait until I hardly have to use dewormers. So far, I have only had a few that came to my homestead with previous overuse of dewormers. I learned about your courses after I purchased the goats. Yeah, I know we most of us. It's unfortunate because worms and dogs and cats is a really simple thing. Um, and so nobody thinks like, oh, I'm going to buy goats and I'm going to have to learn something completely different uh, when it comes to worms. And, and that's the thing, you know, um, Dr. Posado, uh, Mississippi State, he and I did a podcast a couple months ago about dewormer myths because they are so pervasive still. Um and he was saying that a lot of these myths come from the dog and cat world, you know, like, oh, well, we give a heartworm preventative every month. Um, so that's where people think like, oh, well, I'm going to give a dewormer on, to my goats on a regular basis. And it's very, very different um, with with goats and with with dogs and cats. The thing is, with goats, they are if you don't rotate your pastures, your goats are eating from their toilet. So they're eating today where they pooped five or six days ago. And now there's infective larva on that grass. So they're consuming infective larva. And if they had a dewormer, then those larva are going to grow into worms that are resistant to the dewormer that that goat was given. So um, it's it's really unfortunate. And, you know, I just... I got another email. Actually, I was like, one of our Goats 365 premium members sent me a text yesterday saying that she took her goat to a vet over the weekend who told her to give her injectable ivermectin for six days at the sheep dosage, which is the absolute worst thing I have ever heard. 
um, like the worst, most horrible information. And I, I've never even heard that before. Um, six days of ivermectin injectable. Oh my gosh. First of all, injectable has been like 10 years ago. They said no injectables for goats because it leads to dewormer resistance because it has a very long tail because it's going to stay in their system for a really long time. So that vet basically just gave her an amazing recipe for ivermectin resistance um, in her goat. Um, or it's not in her goat, it's in, her, in the worms. Um, like every worm that is in that goat's body is going to be resistant to ivermectin. And um, the reason we don't use injectables in goats is because they stay in the body for so long. So ivermectin injectable stays in the body for like over a month at a very, very low level. And that's the thing, like that's the crazy thing about this vet recommending it for six days because the big claim to fame for ivermectin injectable when it came on the market was it's like, you know, you give it to them once and then it stays in the system for like a month or so continuously killing worms. Well, that's what they thought when they made, made it, but that's not how it works. What happens is it stays in the body at a very low level. And so all the worms are not being killed by it. They're being inoculated. They're basically being vaccinated for it so that they can survive it. And they're going to have babies that survive it. So for a month, they're pooping out larva um, or pooping out eggs that turn into larva, turn into worms that are going to be resistant to ivermectin. Um, so, you know, there's unfortunately most vets don't see a lot of goats. Um, and I told her, I said, this sounds like a vet who went to vet school more than 20 years ago um, and doesn't really see many goats. So has not been doing any continuing education in goats. And she said, yes, he is quite old and uh, he is a cattle vet. And I'm like, yep, that's exactly what I hear from cattle vets that are quite old. Um, you know, not six days of ivermectin injectable still blows my mind. Like I still think, like, I think, oh my gosh, I've heard it all. And then somebody comes up with something like this and I am just blown away even more. So Anyway, um, the um, information, um, I'll, I'll put the, I forgot to put the link to the goat worm article on my website. I have a lot of articles, but the one at thriftyhomesteader.com slash goat dash worms is, is the one is like the big article that like links to all the smaller articles. So it gives you the overview and then you can, um, if you need more information on something, you can click on that and go to that article to give you more information on that. And also to the various podcasts that I've done. You know, I've done a lot of podcasts with Dr. Posado, um, who's a vet professor. I've also done a, a, quite a few pod podcasts with Susan Shaney, and who just recently retired um, from um, a university. Escapes my mind right now. Um, but she's one of the authors of a lot of research on sheep and goats. Um, and dewormers and stuff like that. So if you've got questions, you're watching this later, please post in the comment section below because um, there's just so much old information out there from the 1990s still, as well as older vets who are not doing any continuing education in goats because they think, oh, it's the same. Like I'm just doing my continuing education in cattle and goats are just little cows. So whatever I do with the cows is gonna work with the goats. And that is absolutely not true. That's one of the things, one of the ways I find professors to do my um, podcast is if I, if I read something written by them and they specifically say, goats are not little cows. I'm like, yes, you are my person. Um, so because goats are not little cows and if you treat them like little cows, it's going to be a big problem. And I know a lot of the people who have the hardest time raising goats are cattle ranchers. Like they, they think, oh, I'm going to get some goats to eat the weeds in my pasture that my cows won't touch. And they try to treat them like cows and they wind up with a lot of problems. So, um, Jasmine says, I love and value all the information in the parasite course. So much misinformation from my small animal vet med experience and natural health for humans, LOL. I will be a forever student and my animals will benefit from it. Oh, thank you so much, Jasmine. Yes, like I said, those of you who've been around for a while know that we had horrible problems with worms in the early 2000s because most of this information just was not available. And that's when I started reading the research. And so I've, my knowledge has evolved along with as the research has evolved and um, so there's been a lot of changes in the last 20 years in parasite research, you know, and even what they were saying 10 years ago, 
they're like, oh, no, we thought that was going to work 10 years ago, but it didn't. So we're going to have to do it now. Um, Audrey says, when my weather had mites, I used injected ivermectin to treat him. Is there another option to treat this? Yes, you can use poron. Um, you can use a poron for um, mites. So um, poron ivermectin um, works for mites and lice both. So usually I use the poron aprinomectin, um, which the brand name of that is Epronex. I use that one because there's not an oral version of that. So it's a little bit different um, from ivermectin and cytectin. So um, ideally it, it shouldn't matter. You know, like if you're, if the goal is that less than 10% of your goats will get a dewormer every year. Um, and if you can do that, less than 10% of your goats getting a dewormer every year, you should not ever have a problem with dewormer resistance because that means that 90% of your goats have refugia, which is um, worms that have not been exposed to the dewormer. So 90% of the larva in your pasture is going to be from worms that are not resistant. And with 90% of them being not resistant, then your goats should not have, have worm problems. So, um, again, if you have questions, if you're watching this later, feel free to post in the comment section below and I, or Tammy, who is also a certified FAMACHA instructor, will get back to you. Thanks so much. I hope this helps. Bye everyone.